Hey everyone, welcome back to Cody Tarot. So for today's tarot reading, we're going to be covering your life purpose. I apologize, I have a little bit of a sore throat. I don't know if you guys will be able to tell, but I can tell. Um, so hopefully, like, talking and stuff will be flow with relative ease. Um, I might have to split the piles up into two days or something like that instead of filming all the readings back to back. But today's about life purpose, and I want to talk about life purpose because through our lives, we can have different life purposes that, like, manifest at different times. You know, at one time, you might want to be, like, a tarot card reader, and then another time, you might want to become, like, a singer. Or at one time, you want to, like, maybe start your own business where there may be a completely other time where you want to pick up a sport and start, like, exercising a lot or something like that. So we're going to be talking about all the life purposes you have and how those are going to be manifesting through your life. Um, I don't really know other than that what the reading's going to be about. I just know I want to pull some of my career cards and get, like, some good ideas of, like, to springboard off, like, places where you guys can, like, think and focus on. So if you feel or have been feeling a little bit lost lately as far as, like, something you want to do or some kind of passionate hobby you want to pursue or something along those lines, this will be the reading for you. If not, this will just be a good reflection of, like, the hobbies you've completed throughout your life and kind of your interests and stuff like that. So we're going to be covering all of that in today's reading. So we have five groups in front of us. Our first group is Candle Quartz. That's group one. Group two is Still Bite. That's group two. Group three is Clear Quartz. Group four is Heliodor. And last, group five is Spirit Quartz. So take all the time you need to pick your crystal. You can pause the video here if you need to. Let me organize a little bit better. Yeah, and... Um, with that said, um, I'm going to get into the reading. So yeah, take all the time you need, pause the video, and yeah, we'll start with group number one, the Candle Quartz. Hey, group one, this is if you picked the um, Candle Quartz, this crystal, lovely crystal right here. So it's like a candle because it has like all these cathedral type things on it that make it look like it's melting wax. So yeah, that's why it's called Candle Quartz. Um, Let's get right into your reading. Um, I'm going to be drawing, I don't know, I'm going to like see how many come out as far as like purposes for you guys. And as far as like the deck goes, I'm splitting this deck. I'm going to like, like after this reading's over, I'm not going to reshuffle the cards in for the other groups. So if you feel drawn to watching more than one, actually maybe I will. I think I will actually because... I'm mixing it up enough where the energies could come out differently. But if you feel drawn to watch more than one pile, feel free to do so. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so let's get into your reading. Let's draw the um, career cards first to see what are areas where you may be talented in or have areas where your life is calling you to explore these specific areas. Okay, I have one card that wants to come out. I'll take that one. I'll take this one, that one. I want to draw one from the bottom to middle. I'll take that one. I'm going to draw some tarot cards. To clarify these let me actually I'll pull them up as we go we have the office we have the artist we have parenthood and we have crafter okay lovely okay so then let's get some tarot cards For each of these, I'm going to pull a card below each one just to get some clarifications. And I'm also going to be using my um, playing card deck. Um, I 
I'm like practicing divination with just simply playing cards lately. So we'll see how that goes too. So um, yeah, let's get a card for, okay, we have Temperance and the Five of Swords coming out under Office and the Artist. We need two more cards. Let's draw them. For Parenthood, we have the Devil. And for Crafter, we have the Queen of Pentacles. And then let's see, do we ever have some room on this table for... Let me see if we can... I have to squish some things together to get the full room of like all the cards so there's not gonna be like space between the cards but um yeah we'll we'll make do okay so let's see i have a lot of cards when we get on the table let's get these playing cards out draw some playing cards for these columns columns of life purpose that we have on the table For the office, we have the Three of Diamonds. For the artist, we have King of Hearts. For Parenthood, we have Three of Hearts. And for Crafter, we have five of hearts. Make sure all this looks good in the... That gives me a little bit of space if I want to pull extra cards too. We can pull some stuff on the side. I'll pull it right there for now. Okay, so let's get into your reading. Okay, let's get into your reading. So first with office coming out is the first life purpose or life passion um, that's coming through for you guys. We have temperance here, right? Um, and this is going to sound kind of odd because normally we hear stuff like in readings where it's like, oh, you know, your destiny is to, you know, be like an artist or a singer, a musician, or your destiny is to be an actor, your destiny is to be, do some kind of creative work, right? We always hear that in tarot readings where it's like, you know, you're a creative person, you have creative work, stuff like that. I'm specifically seeing for you guys that like being working in an office is partly something that is going to be a big part of your life in this lifetime. Um, I am saying that uh, one of the reasons why you might get into this office job is specifically for money. You might be offered this kind of office position um, mainly because it offers a good amount of income for you or it's it's stimulated like the way you get into it could be because of financial insecurity or something like that um, i am seeing though with the temperance card you're totally protected and it's a divinely guided job i think you're going to meet a lot of people in this particular area of your life and it might not even be that it's just that because i'm seeing more heart cards which represent like people and relationships and those are under your other career paths so it's like those are the more engaging with people but i think this is going to like start you off it's interesting. It's with the temperance card here. I see that it kind of like teaches you a lot in this particular career with the office card. Um, it's almost like working in an office or doing office work is going to teach you a lot that you can use in the rest of your life. Um, also with the three of diamonds here, I see that this office job, it's not going to be like that much of a boring office job, there's going to be a lot of creativity involved in it, as we see with the three card here. Even though it might be stimulated, you might be like wanting to do this job because of financial insecurity, or like thinking you're not going to have enough, so you take this high position to like work in this office to like make a lot of money. I see that it's not necessarily a bad thing. And because the temperance card is here, it's showing me that. I see that also you guys have artistic talents. You're probably going to become parents and you have crafting talents as well. Yeah, it's interesting. With think of the greater good than oneself to achieve a better outcome. I am seeing this office position, especially with this temperance card. You're working for some kind of higher force or higher like being in this particular point of your life. You might not be able to see when you're working this office job, like what 
the point is, or you might not be able to kind of imagine like, who am I doing this for? But it's serving a bigger purpose. It's serving a bigger picture. It might be interesting because the office job might actually be your main money-making job, or you might make the most money working for this office position. I'm also seeing that you could be promoted to a manager in this office position, or you could take on a managerial role. I do see this office position is different from a lot of office positions because it is going to, um, you're going to be able to be very creative in the work that you do, or there's something about like being financially creative with this office job. With temperance here representing like the angelic form, this is something that is almost God given in a sense. Like this is something that your angels have kind of blessed you with or have led you to for like a particular reason. Um, I'm not exactly seeing the reason fully, but I am seeing a, a strong sense of protection and I am seeing enjoyment. Like I am seeing you enjoy this office job or you enjoy this office position. You guys might be surprised. Um, you might not think at like at this point in your life that you're, you're going to want a position like that, but I am seeing that you kind of enjoy it. It's kind of fun for you. Um, if you're in an office job right now and you hate it and it's not like clicking for you or anything like that, this is probably not your reading because I am seeing positivity in this office job or I am seeing your angels divinely guiding this office job towards you. So there's only like good things that come from it basically. The other career that I see or the other part of your life purpose with the artist card, the king of hearts and the five of swords, I do see that you guys have artistic talents. Um, and it might be one of those things too, where if you haven't tapped into them yet and you do start tapping into them, you find out very quickly that you're very good at being an artist. You're very good at creative things. Um, also with the five of swords here, this card is urging you to not have an ego about it. You're probably so good at artistic stuff that you probably think very highly of yourself or you think your stuff is like the best there is, is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. Because I always see the five of swords when it comes up with some kind of ego. Um, you see this guy who's collected all these swords and the other guys in the, the background who he's kind of alienated, right? And the only way you can alienate people is by having kind of like a bigger ego than them, essentially. Um... So I do see that you guys have this kind of like bigger ego about your artistic talents. Like you kind of know you're a good artist, essentially. Um, I do see that working on artistic projects throughout your life could be, and here's the thing I want to point out, like, even though these are all separate things, parenthood, crafter, artist in the office, these could be separate areas of your life that at different points you get into different things, or they could be things that are all linked in with one career. Like, for example, maybe you work in an office, but you're an artist at that office or something like that. Um, or maybe, you know, like you craft like, like uh, costumes or something for your kids. And that's how crafter and parenthood come together. But basically these life purposes with the artist here, I am seeing like a really cool thing with the king of hearts here. You are going to meet a very powerful lover that is also an artist in um, when you're working on your artistic projects. It's like you meet this kind of like soulmate, soul connection, but someone who's a very good lover. Like the intimacy is going to be fire. It's going to be really, really good. It's like two artists like collaborating. And I'm not seeing so much like marriage or anything like that. I am seeing someone being like a really strong and powerful lover for you. Um, and also I see some kind of like <laughs> fun, like intimate moments with like role play and stuff like that. Cause five of swords can also remind me of someone who's more dominant in the bedroom. So I feel like with this art, this other artist or this other artist that you kind of end up being a lover with, with the King of hearts here, I do see that you become, you take on a more dominant role with this person. Um, and so that's something that's kind of fun. I see you kind of doing a lot of creative collaborative projects with this person. Also, I do see that like being an artist helps you handle your emotions better, if that makes sense. So for example, like just creating or the act of creating or making artistic projects, there's something you have a kind of a controlled aspect when you create things in this artistic realm. It's like you have this kind of controlled way of creating where it creates like this kind of it, you're basically like the cards are just showing me that you're really good at what you do as far as the art artistic career goes. Or if you decide to take an artistic career, the only thing is you have to watch out for having an ego in the world of being an artist, right? Or at least for in your guys's case, you might butt heads with other people or on team projects where other people want to collaborate with you and you have more of a vision of how you want it to go and other people have their vision and you kind of butt heads because you think that your vision is better than theirs. Um, 
So it's one of those things where it's it's calling to activate diplomacy or it's just forewarning you with the five of swords here that you might have more of an ego with your artistic talent. So it might be something that you choose um, maybe after a few unsuccessful attempts to work on a team or on artistic projects with other people to keep it with something that you keep to yourself or at least with you work on this artistic projects with this one other lover, right? Um, kings can talk about ruling a kingdom. So this could be something where if you do work on a team, you might want to position yourself as the leader. That's the other thing with this office job with the managerial role, right? And the king being here, you might want to position yourself as someone who is ahead of other people. So as long as you have the creative vision and other people are working for you, I see it working out very fine, uh, working out well for you. It's just that with this, uh, Five of Swords here, you just want to watch out for having that kind of egotistical streak, right? Because that can alienate people. The Five of Swords can talk about conflict or people not liking someone because they think they're better than them, stuff like that. So just be careful with your ego when it comes to your artwork. Um, yeah, I think being open to helpful suggestions could be very positive, but at the same time, if it's too difficult and you just kind of feel it's a solo project or you want your art career to be solo, there's nothing wrong with like taking the path in life where this art career is something that you do on your own. I do see though a powerful love interest like exploring this artistic side with you or something like that. So keep that in mind. With parenthood, I see that one of your life purposes and your life paths is to be a parent and to be a parent of some like group of children. We have the three of hearts here, which makes me think that you'll be having three children um, or there'll be three significant younger people that you govern throughout your life that kind of you raise and you kind of um, nurture throughout their life. I see that it's interesting because with other artists and stuff where you have the more of an ego with like your artistic talents, with children and younger people, I see you guys have a very caring and nurturing component to your personality that kind of gives kids like, I want to say freedom. The thing is we have the devil card here too. So there's, there's also this element of learning. Like, I feel like you guys are going to, this, you're going to be working through some of your control issues that you had with like a specific parent of yours with your children. You'll be learning how to not control your children. Like your parent was controlling you, if that makes sense. So I definitely see this kind of element of giving freedom to your kids. I also see that these kids could be like created in a night of like passion and you might, they might be unexpected and you might just decide to have them even though they're like unexpected because with the devil card, it talks about lust and um, it talks about like ambition, right? So I do see that like you might also push your kids to great achievements, but I'm definitely seeing with this nurturing and warm nature would make you a, a caregiver or a parent, this sentence right here in this card that you're going to have like a really, you're going to be an amazing parent, basically. It's part of your life path. It's part of your life purpose is to raise or also with parenthood, this could be pets. This could be like dogs or cats or something like that or an animal companion. Um, keep that in mind. Nurturing and caring for something can go beyond just children. It can go to an animal companion as well. So I do see that that's for some of you as well. Um, with the three of hearts here, I do see that um, you might be multitasking a lot with your kids. There might be something along the lines where you might have to split your time between all kids. And that might be a life lesson that you came here to learn in this lifetime is to split your time amongst all your children and kind of like give each of them like individualized attention, but like know when to, when you're giving too much attention to one child and having to give more attention to the other child. So I do see there's like almost like a balancing act with like all of your kids and like spending time with all of them. Um, that's something that is coming through as well. With Crafter here and the Five of Hearts and the Queen of Pentacles, I do see that something that is like important to you guys in this particular, with this particular career is travel. So I do see you guys becoming somewhat of a collector of sorts. Um, with the Crafter card here, I am seeing that you guys travel places and you collect different objects and things to work in your crafts or your art. Um, this can also be, even though it says crafter here, this could also be like import export of like goods or services or like going places to, to sign a deal or something like that. Like going back to the office work, like having to travel places to like sign or negotiate a contract or something like that. Like you might literally be crafting contracts with your job. Yeah. And it's interesting. I see that like at one point in your life, you might actually 
break away from your office job to specifically work on like arts and crafts. And with the five of hearts here, this talks about, um, this card can talk about like divorces and it can talk about separations, but it really just talks about also, it talks about like meeting new people. And so with the five of hearts here, I see that with the crafting job, you might meet a lot of new people in this particular job. With queen of pentacles, I see that it's something that it has something to do with your past. There's something that you, and this is probably something that you guys have already done. Um, also with the Queen of Pentacles, I see you kind of with the crafter job, making a lot of money in this particular job, surprisingly. Um, especially with the Queen of Pentacles here. But this is something that you're taking from your past. So I feel like this crafter thing is very nostalgic for you. You may have crafted things with like a grandparent or a mother or father figure or like an elderly person when you were younger and like made arts and crafts with them. And so it like left this kind of feeling in you to want to make crafts when you're an adult. Um, and you're kind of going back to it is kind of what I'm seeing. So something that also, because it's next to parenthood, you could share this crafting gift with your children as well. Like I was picking up intuitively in the beginning, this crafting and parenthood were tied. So it could be something that you learned from your parents or your grandparents, and you might pass that on to your children as well. With Queen of Pentacles here, this is more of a motherly nurturing influence. So I do see that that could be an, a component as well. Um, with the Queen of Pentacles looking into this pentacle in the past, she's looking at what has tried and true and what has worked before. So I feel like all the methods that you learned in youth Whatever methods or tools you learn about crafting in your youth, you'll be able to it, like expand upon them and work on them in the future, in your future life path. It's like something that's going to come around again. I definitely see also with this crafting job, you're just going to meet a lot of people through it. I don't know what that means because I'm not really seeing the connection, but it's the, the message is there. Um, now with this five of hearts, you're going to meet a lot of people through this crafting job. Um, you might have a lot of experiences. You might travel to a lot of places. You might go a lot of places. So I, I feel like a lot of it is like collection too. Like, for example, like there might be like, with, I'm seeing these buttons here. So if it is something to do with like sewing buttons or something like that, you might go to different places to collect like fantastic antique buttons or something like that. I'm also seeing the measuring tape here and it's reminding me of making clothing or costumes or something like that. So I do see that like, maybe you might make costumes for other people. You might have to travel to like, different places for them to try these costumes or outfits on or something like that. And that becomes a big part of your life. Um, yeah, so fashion could be something that could be important here too. Also, Queen of Pentacles always reminds me of Capricorn just because she has a little, I don't know if you guys can see this, but in the Queen of Pentacles, like she has a little goat on her chair. Like the King of Pentacles has like a, a bull head. So it's like reminds me of Taurus and this goat head reminds me of Capricorn. So Queen of Pentacles always gives me Capricorn vibes. I do see that like something with the Queen of Pentacles here, um, experiencing things from the past and bringing them into the future is important. But at the same time, um, you guys might be a late bloomer with this crafting thing. I am seeing it's something that comes in later in life, maybe after you've had children or maybe through crafting things for your kids or sharing that with your kids, you find you really have a passion for it and you move on to do something like that. Um, so, but any of these honestly can happen at any point in your life, right? Like any of these careers or any of these things can happen at any point in your life and in any combination. I'm just giving you guys the general energy of like what your talents are or what you're meant to experience in this lifetime. Um, I'm going to draw one more card. I was going to roll the Astro Dice, but I decided, I think I'm going to decide against it. I'm going to draw one more card, um, some other separate cards from the career deck for your financial karma in this life. Um, this is either going to be gifts or lessons that need to be learned or something like that. Um, so I'm going to be drawing that right now. Just one card and then we'll wrap up the reading. We have life purpose. Okay, so mainly this is just, it's interesting because life purpose is what the reading's called. But um, life purpose, this is just talking about like manifesting essentially. And if you... Nothing that's like meant for you is going to like leave you, you know, that's kind of the vibe that I'm getting. So I feel like what I want to say here too is like, you guys might be watching this reading and thinking like, yes, all of these are my life purposes, but what if I want more? What if I want something else? What if I want something different than this? I feel like those things are also within your wheelhouse. Those are things you can also receive. Um, I do see with the, the angel of temperance here, this office job might be something that is necessary. I feel like looking back on this office position, you might realize that it was so necessary for your life to like achieve and get where you wanted to be. Um, 
is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. I feel like you guys kind of work well in like a secluded place away from people, or at the same time, you're a manager of people and you kind of govern a bigger group of people and moving them towards a project, basically. This specifically says what is meant for you will not leave you as long as you continue to push forward. So I am saying that maybe a little bit of effort is, is needed in your life. And so maybe doing a little bit of effort, a little extra effort in the areas where you feel like you have talents or you want to explore talents. This can indicate with the um, five here of stepping into new experiences. So if you feel nervous stepping into new experiences, this can also indicate to not be afraid with the threes here to do multiple things at once, right? You might work at the office and then have an artistic career on the side. You might be a mother of three, but also have this side project of crafting at the same time. So not, not being afraid to that. And with push forward, I'm also seeing with the king of hearts here to not be afraid to step into a managerial role, but at the same time, watch the ego. That's all I have to say. It's okay to be a manager and to govern people, but make sure you kind of don't alienate them at the time as you're, as you're becoming the dominant one in the workforce, basically. That's kind of the only, the only message that's kind of like a little warning to give to you guys. All right, I'm going to wrap up the reading there. Thank you guys for letting me read for you. If you like this reading, please like or comment below. If you really enjoyed this reading and you resonated with my energy, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. With that said, I'm going to move on to group two with the still bite. Thank you guys again for watching. Hey, group two. This is if you picked the still bite, this really cool peachy kind of stone. Um, yeah, so let's get into your reading. Um... Today, we're going to be covering many different life purposes, and they could happen in all sorts of combinations, um, including all at the same time or all separately throughout your life at different periods of time throughout your life. So keep that in mind. Let's get into it. Um, okay, so we have some cards. We need to draw some of these career cards for you guys. Let's see. Draw two from the bottom. Okay. And the cards you have are helper. We also have teacher. We have Gaia. And we have planner. So I'm going to be putting these, all the cards are going to be a little bit bunched together in today's reading. There's not going to be much space between them because we have a lot to get on the table. Um, let's see. And then next, we're going to draw some tarot cards. I'm pulling tarot cards for a little bit of clarification for each of these roles. You know, I could just read for these roles, but with the extra clarification, I think it's going to help me understand how these roles are going to manifest in your life a little bit better. I'm also pulling playing cards today, and then we're going to pull a karma card for your life for... Um, finances and things going on in your life, basically. Okay. The cars need to come out for group two in their life purpose. These two cards. I want to take these for the, the tail end. We have the Three of Cups and the Emperor card. For the teacher, we have the Nine of Pentacles. And for Helper, we need one more card for Helper. And we have the Star. Wow. Let's pull these down here. Okay, and then I'm going to draw some playing cards as well. Group one was so fun. Okay, I'm going to be honest. I was very nervous to read tonight um, because I'm sick or I have something going on with my throat. And I was like nervous if what if it's like going to affect the reading and stuff. And group one went okay. Like it didn't, it didn't go horribly. <laughs> so that's good news. Um, so let's get some playing cards for you guys. So for a helper, we have Queen of Clubs, 
We also have, for teacher, we have nine of hearts. I feel like pulling from all different piles of the deck for eight of clubs for Gaia. And for planner, we have six of spades. Okay, let's get into your reading. So we have a few things to cover here. Um, I want to start out with something that is probably going to be obvious to most of you. Uh, that way you kind of know if you pick the right pile. Um, with Planner, Six of Spades, and the Emperor card, you guys are my organized people. Like, I mean, you're the types of people who have, like, schedules for things. Or you have things, like, planned out to the T. Um, I feel like you kind of have this ability to kind of um, plan your life out very in a very organized way is kind of what I'm seeing. Um, right here it says careers in event planning, project management, or professional organizer could be for you. And here's the thing, you guys might feel like you're fated with the six of spades here. You might feel like you're fated for this type of career, that you're fated to do something where you're organizing things for others, or you're organizing people's schedules or something like that. With the emperor card here, I see that you kind of take on this leadership role with people usually, and you kind of become the one who kind of organizes everyone into the smooth running unit. And you kind of make everyone kind of, you kind of give the battle plan, right? Um, to be honest, um, I have a sister that's like this and she's very organized and like, the best way I can describe it is like when she goes to the grocery store, like there's a list of stuff, you know, she has to get, which is like normal for everyone. But like, there's like a battle plan, like, okay, like we're going to go to this store at 855 and then at like nine, we're going to go to this store. And then at like 930, we're going to be at this store. It's like everything's listed out and it doesn't have to be as extreme as that, but you guys are pretty organized. You're pretty well structured and organized as people is kind of what I'm seeing. And you kind of like things laid out in plans. Um, yeah, with the six of spades here, this is just showing me this is something that you probably at this point in your life, you realize is something you want to incorporate as is part of your life purpose or is something that is kind of going to be consistent throughout your life. Um, so for some of you, this is something that you've kind of come across where you're like, wow, I'm actually really good at organizing people. And I've always been like this, but I never knew that I was about this or I never knew that I was good at this. And so I feel like with this planner card, especially the six of spades, it became something of a life purpose for you. Um, but for others of you, this is just something that's going to be continuous throughout your entire life. It's going to always be there. It's not, there's not going to be many ups and downs with it. You're just always going to be organized. Part of your life purpose is to be an organized person, to plan events, uh, to plan things out, uh, with taking a financial inventory and see what needs changing, to be good with money, to be good with finances. I feel like you guys are really good with that. Um, and with the emperor to take a little, bit, a little bit of a leadership role in your planning activity. So not being afraid to plan for others or plan for other people. I see that with the emperor here, this planning side of you is part of your divine masculine purpose on this planet. Um, you're the side of you that is divine masculine, right? Um, cause we all have masculine and feminine within us. The part of you that's masculine, this is where this planner side comes out, right? Um, Let's move on to everything else. Now that I got the planner thing out of the way, I might move back into it at the end of the reading, but we'll see. So Helper and Queen of Clubs and the Star card. I feel like with Helper and Queen of Clubs here, you guys are meant to nurture others. You're very giving, helping, like kind of caring people. And I do see that like one of your life purposes at one particular point in your life is to nurture or care for someone else. I see with this Helper card that this nurturing and caring for someone else is going to bring you a lot of fame and recognition. It's almost like, um, like the thing that's coming to mind, to be honest, is like you guys being like a nurse or like a helper for someone who is like in their old age, but they're like famous and they like help, they give you a leg up in the, in the world because they have like a famous personality or something like that, but they're maybe they're like 80 and they need help around the house. And so you help this like famous old person and they give you a leg up in your career or something like that. Um, there's something that I'm seeing with the star card here that something about fame or being a celebrity. Also, the star card can represent something that's next on your path. So maybe the next thing in your path coming up is to be a helper or to be someone who helps others. With the Queen of Clubs here, I see that this is something that is tied in with your intuition pretty strongly. So the Queen of Clubs is a card about um, intuition and getting like pieces of intuition um, about like the world. Um, 
With this cat here, you guys might actually have more of an aloof attitude towards life is kind of what I'm seeing, but it's kind of the cards you're asking you or part of your life purpose is to shed this aloof attitude and really help other people with their life and their issues and their problems. Um, I see that it brings you a lot of joy and um, contentment to help other people. There's a little warning here where it says avoid giving too much of yourself while neglecting your own needs. You, you want to also be careful of that. You want to make sure that you're taking care of yourself while helping others. But I think this is something that for the most part comes naturally to most of you. I feel like most of you understand that you have to help yourself first before you help others. And so you're actually more eager to help yourself than helping others because you know that as soon as you help yourself, you can get back to helping other people. It's kind of like a really cool thing where you guys kind of like are very concerned with taking care of your own needs, your own sense of self, um, especially with the cat here. Cats are very like independent, take care of themselves. You know, they know that they can like bathe themselves. Like unlike, um, you know, a dog who has like more requirements with potty training and stuff like that. Cats have like a litter box. They know how to like do all these things and kind of be independent from their owners a little bit. Um, and so I kind of see the sense of like, you guys always take care of yourself no matter what, even though you do love helping others. So you kind of know that as soon as you take care of yourself, you can go back out and help other people, but it's like, okay, I, my battery's drained. I got to take care of myself. Once I do that, I can help others again. So I feel like you guys know that back and forth very well. That's what kind of makes you like destined with the star card, destined to be helpers of other people because of that, because you already know and have mastered how to take care of your own needs, right? Um, that's something that is very important if you're trying to help others. I know I struggle with that personally, like um, wanting to do things for other people, but then at the same time, like not paying attention to what I need, you know? So I'm still in that phase of life where I have to pay attention to what I need a little bit sometimes. So I'm seeing with you guys, you've almost mastered it. Um, there might be a little few times where you struggle with it a little bit, but for the most part, I see you guys are very good at taking care of your own needs. Therefore, when it's time to help others, you have the energy to help them and it's really easy for you to do so. This woman is wearing a shirt that says fun. And so I do feel like helping other people is really fun for you. I feel like for a lot of people, it's not fun. Other people are like, man, I really have to help this person. Like, why can't they take care of themselves? You guys really enjoy helping others. You really enjoy like being there for others and building them up and helping them in that way. So I feel like something with helping people is going to be really important for you. Um, yeah, the card right here says, consider careers in customer service or in any field where you're able to care for others. And with the queen here, this is a very nurturing energy. So I see that you caring for others is really important. And specifically because it's the queen of clubs, I'm seeing that using your intuition is going to be very, very important when it comes to caring for others. Or something about communication is very important when it's coming to you and caring for others. You might have to... Um, you could be with this teacher card here. I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but you could with this teacher card here, help others communicate better, like a speech pathologist or something like that, and help people learn how to talk better or work with people with languages or something like that, or help other people in foreign countries speak and learn a different language. That could be something that would be, that's something that could happen, or just using your intuition in general to um, help people, like kind of like figuring problems out for them and kind of knowing what's the most they're the best way to move forward using your intuition to help them in their life. Um, I see with this yellow rose here, yellow flowers to me always symbolate, sim, symbolate, <laughs> that's not a word, symbolize friendship. And so I definitely see you might meet a lot of your friends through helping them. I feel like a lot of people are really deeply appreciative of this help that you give and they feel like almost like they feel like their friendships like indebted to you, if that makes sense. So they feel like they, this sounds a little bad because you, you know, obviously you want people to just be friends with you for you and stuff like that. But the thing is, this is a part of you. You are someone who can help others. And so I do see your friends kind of recognize you as someone who kind of gives without a second thought. So that's something that is really admirable and I admire it deeply in you guys, just so you know. Um, with teacher here in the nine of hearts and the nine of pentacles, I see that at some point in your life, your life purpose is to have a lot of money and you're, you're meant to gain all this money from teaching others. 
It's interesting because with the planner energy over here, I feel like with the planner energy, you have this vibe throughout your life of learning how to manage money pretty effectively. And that's kind of what it comes off here with, um, it says this is a great time to take financial inventory and see what needs changing. I feel like change is important in your finances throughout your life because it's gonna always be changing. Your financial situation is always gonna be changing. And the fact that you always manage it super effectively, you're learning a lot about money through this lifetime. As with teacher here, I feel like being a teacher that motivates others, coaching others, mentorship, motivational speaker, really important career paths for you that are going to happen later in life. Um, with nine here, nine represents the end or the completion. So I do see this happening more later in life. And I do see you teaching or helping other people with this in a more of like a counselor role is kind of what I'm seeing. I see this is going to make you a lot of money, especially in the end of life. It's it's It kind of sucks that you guys have to go through some of your life like not making that much or like just having the fluctuations more and then at the end of your life you get to make all this money, but you're going to end your life with like a lot of money. We see that here with the, the, the double nine energy. Um... I just see that you guys become this like really powerful teacher, whether you're a motivator, like a motivational teacher, whether you teach in like a traditional school, however the teaching comes about, you're going to become a teacher, or uh, disseminator, is that the right word? You're going to disseminate, I think that's a word, disseminate knowledge to others. Um, about like life and your experiences. I see that with the nine of hearts here, this is gonna take on like a emotional con a component for you. Um, it's gonna be something along the lines of sharing love with others as well as your life skills, right? Um, yeah, I feel like with nine of hearts, this teaching position could come from a lot of life experience and having the wisdom and knowledge to pass down to others, specifically in the area of relationships. I see you guys have a lot of knowledge about relationships. You have a lot of information at the, you might not think you have it now, but by the end of your life, you're gonna have a lot of information about how people can best guide their lives. I see also, there's also kind of like a moral component to this, where you might be teaching people to have better morals, or you might be teaching people um, how to follow their heart is something that's coming through and kind of like that might be the core motto of your teaching path is kind of what I'm seeing. I feel like that might be something that you strive for in your life too, is to like follow your own heart or follow your heart. And so with the nine of hearts here, <laughs> yeah, nine of hearts, um, <laughs> basically it's like saying that like you're kind of guiding others, you're kind of at the, the end point of a part of your life of an emotional development in your life. And so you're sending that information back down to others and it's going to bring you a lot of financial resources. It's going to bring you a lot of, a lot of wealth. Um, and with this nine being an independent card, when in tarot, the nines are more about independence. Um, I do see that this, a lot of this wealth is going to be yours, specifically yours only. Like you're not going to have to, maybe this is important for some of you to hear. You're not going to have to share it with anyone. It's like yours. You can do whatever you want with it. It's like specifically your money. Like you have a whole, you're going to have a whole bunch of money and it's going to be yours and you can do whatever you want with it. Now, this is a fun thing for some of you. This has already happened. Um, for others of you, it hasn't happened yet. But with Gaia, Eight of Clubs, and the Three of Cups, you're going to have a period of your life where you're really deeply connected to the earth. Um, it's kind of separate from the rest of your life. Um, it's almost like, how do I put this? It's like your life path has this kind of like path to it, right? Like we have the planner here where you're like organized and stuff like that. And the helper and then the helper kind of evolves into the teacher. You know, it's like this kind of like this path that I'm seeing with Gaia here. It's like this, this little area is like so out of the blue, right? With Gaia, you're going to have a period of time where you're very connected to the earth. You're probably really focused on like environmentalism. With here, it says protecting the planet, herbalism, livestock, or working with nature could be for you. I see that all of these things you'll be doing with a group of friends or a community. This kind of is giving me like, like, like um, don't take offense to this, guys. It's kind of giving me like fun culty vibes. Like you might be a part of a cult that's like very focused on nature and the environment and the earth and being very caring for the earth. And I feel like with the eight of pentacles or the eight of clubs, you guys are going to get really obsessed with this particular aspect of your life. Like you're going to get really into nature or really into farming or really into caring for the land. There's something about like really getting your hands dirty basically. And I see that you have like a lot of friends 
that um, are like joining you on this path or you meet a lot of people through this path. So there is some kind of community that I'm seeing that you become a part of that where the earth is focused as a big centerpiece in this community. Um, yeah, where it says the universe is working with you, believe in its subtle magnetism to guide you. I feel like this is a very spiritual component of your lifestyle. So for example, you might be going through a spiritual awakening when you're working with these people or you're working with the earth. Um, you're going to have a really strong spiritual connection to nature. Um, you might have some kind of tr something transiting Virgo at this time, because I know sometimes Virgo um, can deal with like natural like remedies or the earth and stuff like that. Same with like Taurus or Capricorn, but mainly I'm seeing like Virgo. Like you might want to check what planets you have in Virgo and what's transiting them like in the, your future, because that might be something that's coming up. Um, with the eight of clubs, I am seeing you guys get really obsessed with this project, right? Like you guys get like so into it and it becomes your main focus. So for example, eights kind of happen when it's like one thing that we need to focus on for a really long, like not a long period of time, but for an intense moment of time, right? So I do see that you become really into this earth stuff. Like you really become really focused on studying herbalism, studying like animals, studying the cycles of nature, studying how the earth operates. And you have a lot of people who are doing this with you. So I do see that it's like a period of study for you. It's a period that's very different from the rest of your life. It's very separate from the rest of your life. It's kind of like this blip where you go into a time period where... It's almost going to feel like, how do I put this? It's going to feel like you're a different person in this time period because it's almost like being a part of this group or being so focused on the earth and nature and kind of like, this could also be like with crystals and stuff. Maybe you go on like an a, like a vacation where you like, you know, mine for crystals or something in the earth and you go with a whole bunch of other people and you start studying different crystals or something like that. Um, but also I'm seeing like... You know, it could be anything with the earth. You could like live on a farm for like 10 years of your life and then move back to the city. It's something very separate and different from the rest of your life. And you're going to meet a lot of people doing it is kind of what I'm seeing. Or you're going to create really close bonds with close friendships. So I am seeing this earth thing kind of like a bigger community, something that's possibly more of like a bigger community for you guys. Very cool. Let me get you one more card. I want to pull a kind of like lifetime karma card for your finances to see what are the things you are dealing with this lifetime for finances. We know at the end of your life, you're going to be making a lot of money teaching um, and sharing your knowledge about relationships with people, passing down how to follow your heart and how to love and all of that. That seems like that's kind of the ultimate goal here. Uh, let's see what card comes up. We have windfall. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So... <laughs> Yeah, you're going to have a lot of money, like at some point in your life and maybe periodically throughout your life, you're going to get a lot of windfalls um, of money, specifically something I was picking up intuitively with the helper career and the star here. A lot of success could come to you through helping other people. So if you haven't started helping others yet, it could be very beneficial. Um, you might find that you get more energy back from others then, then you give them. It's like you help them and you receive so much more in return from just helping them, right? And I'm getting head chills, head tingles, so I know this is confirmation. It's like the more you help others, it's like the more energy you get back. The cards are just saying like, if you do need to take time for yourself, take time for yourself. But through helping others, it's like the biggest blessing for you guys is kind of what I'm seeing. With windfall here, it says you're about to receive a windfall of money or pay raise. Money is currently in a positive cycle. This is a great time to treat yourself or make the big purchase. I feel like that's this is great because this is really referring to this in time of your life where you have a lot of money at the end of your life, right? Um, I definitely see just like so much accumulation of wealth for you guys. I feel like you manage it very well. I feel like it's just you have all the factors in place for you to have money at the end of your life. Um, yeah, I feel like you guys are those types of people that like people think you're very lucky or like you just kind of get money and it's like easy for you to get money or something like that. So with this windfall card, I am seeing this kind of like your karma in this life is it's interesting. There's not really a lesson to learn or a, a thing to unlock. It's just part of your karma is to just enjoy your wealth. I think that's part of the message that's coming through is like, enjoy the windfalls, enjoy when money falls into your lap easily and naturally, you know, that's part of your life path is to just experience what it's like to be abundant and have as much money as you need for things, you know? Um, 
And specifically, it's it's less about like almost it's less about like having the money you need for things, and it's more about the experience of receiving windfalls, right? Like getting a large sum of money at a periodic point in your life when you've like wanted it. You know, it's like um, yeah. And you guys might have already realized this. You might have like a every once in a while you might have just one of those really good weeks where things just come to you super easily. Like maybe people are buying you coffee at the coffee shop, or maybe. Um, you know, like something happens and you get a paycheck from the government and you might just have a really good week where you make a lot of money. So your your karma is also, maybe the karma is to manage the windfall because it's right next to the planner card. The karma could be to manage the money in your windfall. So knowing that you're going to be receiving large sums of money periodically throughout your life and learning to make it last or learning to manage it well is kind of what I'm seeing as well. I feel like at the end of your life, though, with this teaching career, I feel like you're going to be making so much money that it's not even going to phase you. Like you'll just be having you'll have enough for like future generations if you decide to have children or if you decide to pass it along to future generations. The thing is, with the nine of pentacles, I am it's a solitary card. It's not like we have the ten of pentacles here, which talks about money in groups like in money with family and stuff like that and like inheritance and stuff like that. This is specifically money that like you make and you get to use for yourself. It's like money you have for you. You know, you don't have to share it with anyone else. You don't have to be with anyone else. And you know, it's like you get the money for yourself in this particular moment of your life, towards the end of your life. It's like you get the resources. That's your reward for being such a good person, being so helpful for others, taking care of the planet, you know, like teaching others at the end of your life. I feel like you guys have a very guided life path. And I feel like it's interesting. Like you have a very interesting life ahead of you. Um, and I just want to let you know that you're lucky and blessed. And uh, thank you for coming to my channel. <laughs> so I'm going to end the reading there. If you guys like this reading, please like or comment below. If you really enjoy this reading, feel free to subscribe to the channel. Um, I welcome new subscribers with open arms. We're always welcoming new people here at Cody Tarot. And with that said... Um, yeah, we're going to move on to group three with the clear quartz. Thank you guys again so much for watching. It was a pleasure reading for you. Hey, group three. This is if you picked the clear quartz piece right here. So a lovely, pretty stone that you guys picked out. Um, today's one of those days, I'm going to be honest with you guys, where I started out the readings and I was like pretty sick. I had a sore throat and I still have a sore throat. But these readings are just flowing today. I don't know what it is. Um, the energy is just, uh, it is just flowing. I, I tried filming one other pick a card. I may upload it, I may not, uh, before this one. Um, but yeah, uh, it just, it the, the energy wasn't flowing as, as well. But this reading, the flow is good. So that's good. Uh, let's get into your reading. So we have your life purpose and all the things about it. What is coming in for group three's life purpose? This card wants to come out. We have Rescuer. Wow. And let's see what else wants to come out. Take this card. We have Entertainer. We also have Health. I'll take the third card from the top, which is Explorer. Okay, I see you guys. Um, okay, so let's get into the tarot card portion. We have nine of clubs coming out for under health what else needs to come out these two cards want to come out we have queen of wands for rescuer and three of pentacles for entertainer and we need one more card for explorer let's draw this one we have the strength card. Okay. Sorry, the cards are kind of cramped just the way I'm doing the layout, so. 
Okay, and then I'm going to also draw some playing cards for you guys. This card wants to come out for Queen of Wands. We have Queen of Diamonds. Okay. Let's see what else wants to come out. We have the three of spades for entertainer. What else? We have the two of hearts for health and we have the nine of diamonds for explorer. Excuse me guys, I'm gonna open the door to outside because I feel like getting some fresh air. Also turn on the fan, but okay. So let's <laughs> let's get into your reading. Wow, you guys are my um, robust group. <laughs> like I don't know. Like I feel a sense of strength from you guys. No pun intended with the strength card. It's like uh, um, how do I put this? You guys, you guys to me seem very physical or like very physical oriented. Um, it's funny you're watching a tarot reading. <laughs> I wouldn't expect that. Um, so <laughs> let's see. Mainly, let's get, okay, so let's just start with the first thing. Um, okay, with Rescuer here, Queen of Diamonds and Queen of Wands, I'm seeing you guys as someone who um, could have worked as like an EMT or a firefighter or a police officer or someone that comes to the rescue of others when they're in need. I see that this type of career. You may have not done it for a long period of time, um, but I am seeing that like through this career, you, you, you saw how much you enjoyed helping people. It's kind of the vibes that I'm getting. And you also got a little bit of taste of your own attractiveness in this career. And I know that sounds weird, but it's like, I feel like you guys at this point in your life, you're meant to be someone who is like looked up to by others. So, you know, I'm seeing like the hot firefighter is kind of the vibe that I'm getting here where it's like with the Queen of Wands, this talks about like, you know, like charisma and also like a sense of uniqueness. So I feel like this is really something that you take pride in whatever this career is as a rescuer rescuing others or coming to the rescue for others is something you really take pride in. And if you're relating to the rescuer portion, but you're like, I was never a firefighter, I was never a cop, or I was never, you know, a paramedic or anything like that. Um, I am seeing that like you did help people through money issues is kind of the thing that I'm getting. I feel like you guys are the people who swoop in to save the day when someone's going through a financial crisis. It's kind of like, you know, either how to, if you don't, if you're not using your exact resources of money to help other people with their issues, you have this way of, how do I explain this? helping them through like advice or an advisory position to get them out of a tricky spot with their finances or something along those lines. I see that you guys are kind of viewed as kind of like a romantic figure at this point in your life. This could be a period of time when you're this firefighter or you're this, I don't, I'm trying to think of like, I don't know too many, like, what are they called? White collar job title positions. Um, cause that's just not the world that I live in, but with queen of diamonds here, you could be in that kind of position of like a white collar rescuer. So just, you can just imagine what that would be like someone who's like in the position where they have to dive in and pull the company out of the red or something like that. Um, and so I'm definitely seeing something along those lines. You might help people with financial irresponsibility, which is funny because I see that you guys might actually be a little financially irresponsible yourselves as far as like, you like to spend on luxury items and you like to get what you want when you want it, <laughs> you know, all that good stuff. Um, with Queen of Wands, I see that this period of your time where you're actually spending a lot on yourself and you're spending a lot on others and rescuing people from different difficult situations has made you very attractive in the eyes of others. This could be a great time to date or to, you know, if, and also if you guys like have that phase of your life where you need to play the field, you need to like experience all the types of people 
to date before you settle on the one. This could be the period of your life where you really are focused on that or you're focused on like multiple romantic partners is kind of what I'm seeing. But I am seeing there is this nurturing vibe with the queen energy here and nurturing through a practical component, whether that's resources, money, um, with rescuer, I'm seeing like, you know, with the careers, obviously firefighter, paramedic or rescuer, heroic profession, that could be possibility here too. Or like if you're less blue collar and more white collar, it would be like through business, like saving people's businesses and stuff like that. Um, the Queen of Wands does represent that in this period of time to take time for yourself when you need it, because you're you're balancing your introverted and extroverted um, activities. So for example, I wouldn't take on too many extra hours at your job because that would might entail too much extroversion time for you guys and you might need a little bit more time to be to yourself one last thing i want to mention just because it says it in the card right here it says asking for help is not a sign of weakness quite the opposite it shows your strength i feel like you guys are going to learn in this period of time to also ask for help as well as give it um i feel this is a period of time where you're learning that um you know, maybe you need to be rescued a little bit too. You know, that could be an, a possibility here. So keep that in mind as well, that you might go through that, ex that, that experience in your life at some point, especially because if you're getting a lot of karma for helping other people when they need help, you might get help in your life. And it might be part of your karma to learn how to receive help as well as give it. With Entertainer here, I see you guys have an amazing ability to entertain others like you guys are funny or you're entertaining like there's something about you that's just like so like you're quick like I don't know how to explain it but you're quick your wit is quick um I see that you guys have a period of your life where you're going to be in the entertainment industry um in in any way shape or form whether you're famous or not famous or you, and you're just doing it for fun I see that you're specifically working with a group of people and you're going to be entertaining others with this group of people. You guys are going to be an excellent team player in this particular situation. I feel like there's not so much a vibe of leadership here, but a vibe of feeling a part of a group and feeling a part of a community, right? Um, and specifically a money-making community. So it's going to feel very productive. It's going to feel very efficient. I feel like the vibe that I'm getting here for the entertainment is working with other people on a team. So for example, something that's very like runs very efficiently is like, you know, like a Hollywood movie set or something like that, where they're filming a movie, you know, everyone has their place, their position, and everyone has their job to do. And you also you feel like very, uh, what's it called? Um, productive in that environment, right? This could also be something along the lines of working for with entertainment here, you could be like, uh, how do I put this? You could be making like stages at music festivals or something like that and you're a part of the arts the arts department and you're kind of like that's how you focus on entertaining right or you work in a you work as a performing artist at like a circus or something like that and so you just but I'm seeing mainly that like this teamwork is really important here so rather than being a leader in the entertainment industry and having people work below you or being like a manager or something like that I feel like you guys just enjoy being part of a team one thing that I am seeing is that I feel like in your life period periodically, you guys are going to have some struggles and you probably already know this. You're going to have a little bit of anxiety. You're going to have a little bit of confusion. I feel like you might have some indecision in your life. Um, specifically, it might relate to some specific health matter or something along those lines. But what I'm seeing is that through entertainment and entertaining others and performance and, um, either dance, music, theater, any type of entertainment industry career, you're going to heal those issues in this lifetime. So once you start engaging in those um, creative enterprises, you will be starting to heal your anxiety. You'll be starting to heal that part of you that feels split or torn in two or can't make up their mind. Part of it is what I'm seeing too is if you guys have this rescuer position, if there's a little bit of like PTSD from the rescuer job or there's a little bit of kind of like stress left over because I do see you take on this kind of high powered rescuer intense role. I am saying like because it's a more intense environment, the entertainment job might be something that's like just as um, like uh, not not risky. What am I trying to say? just as fulfilling as far as like an adrenaline rush goes because I am feeling you guys do love that adrenaline rush right it might be something as fulfilling as the adrenaline rush but has a way of like healing you at the same time like healing those PTSD issues and stuff like that with um 
the health card here in the next position. Uh, we have, I see with the nine of wands, right? Like as far as like the numbers representing timelines in your life, right? I'm seeing a few things here. Um, first, I am seeing that like you guys might have some health issues at the end of your life um, or some kind of health issue periodically throughout your life that kind of plagues you along the way. Um, I see that this is this is meant to help stimulate you to learn more about health in general. I feel like a lot of you, if you're working as like a paramedic or in a heroic profession as like a nurse or some kind of like EMT or something like that, you're going to learn a lot about health through that. And therefore in life, it's interesting. It's going to save you from like having this health issue a little bit because it's almost like the health issues meant for you to learn more about health, learn more about how the body works, learn more about how things in the medical field operate, right? Because of this particular condition or thing that you're dealing with. Um, I am seeing too that this information, this medical information is going to help a lot in your love affairs is kind of what I'm seeing. There's going to be one other particular person in your life where this medical information is going to be, um, how do I put this? Um, invaluable to them. Also, what I'm seeing here, another message, it says, it's time to replenish your energy and fully in energized to prepare for what's next. There might be a period of time where you meet some significant person because the two of hearts is a love affair card. You might meet some specific person who you fall deeply and passionately in love with. And you guys have a very like carnal, loving, passionate relationship is kind of what I'm seeing. And I am seeing this being a very healing energy for you with this. It says it takes time to replenish your energy and fully energized to prepare for what's next. This might be a period with the nine of wands here where you feel like you are so tired with life or you feel like you've come to a point of exhaustion, right? You're like burnt out, you're exhausted, you're ready to just rest and recuperate. I'm seeing this love affair is something that you guys can sink into and let yourself go into this love affair because this love affair is something that is going to rejuvenate you. This is a person that's going to fill your reserves and fill your energy and rejuvenate you. I feel like through this person that you have this relationship with, after you're out of this relationship, um, I am saying because it's a love affair card and it didn't show up as like a marriage card or anything like that, I am saying this could possibly be just a, a person that you meet throughout your life or some kind of significant other that you meet. Um, that really just rejuvenates you. I'm not saying you can't marry this person. You probably could. Um, but this person is going to rejuvenate that side of yourself and move you towards a new um, future, right? So for example, the way it could go is like you work this job as a rescuer, you meet someone, and basically through that like learning about the health profession and what's going on with you through this love connection, you rest and heal, find out you want to entertain people, have more healing. There's a lot about healing here for you guys. Um, and a lot of about like health in general. So you guys might actually be someone who's good at healing others or might be someone who is like talented at like taking the time to nurture and care for others because we do have a queen here, which is all about nurturing. Um, let's see what else. The best part that I want to get to at the end, and this is something that you can experience as soon as you want to in your life. It'll be so refreshing and rejuvenating. And I think you guys are going to have so much fun exploring because it's the explorer card right this is my hobby card and so a lot of these readings like there's some stuff that comes out as career as other factors like the health is coming more as far as like information that you're learning for some of you you could end up becoming like a doctor or becoming going back to school for a health healing profession and becoming a doctor but one thing that i'm seeing for you guys with the explorer card one thing that's going to bring you so much joy is exploring your environment, exploring different environments. With the nine of diamonds here, I see this happening later in life. And because it's a diamonds card, I see you finding immense value in this, this thing of exploring the world. Um, the, the, the thing right here where it says you may need to go wandering and trust the unknown, that's where the magic lies. This is going to be the most magical time or magical experiences of your life when you get to explore in unknown territories. I feel like you guys are my adventurers and you really, even though you're like rescuing people and you're like focused on entertaining and stuff, the true 
joy in your life is to explore a new environment that is totally unknown to you. And so that's the thing that I'm seeing that you guys really are going to really value. Um, for a lot of you, this is going to be later in life because we do have the nine here. But this is just something that you're meant to kind of complete in this lifetime. This is something that you're meant to kind of master in this lifetime is kind of what I'm seeing. With the strength card here, this ex exploration is going to bring you such strength, such inner strength, such... Um, I feel like a lot of you with the strength card here, this could come at a time where you're overcoming some kind of addiction or you're overcoming some kind of... Um, substance issue. And with the strength card here, this could be a period of your life where you're abandoning and you're going for a more pure lifestyle. And you discover that through this pure lifestyle and kind of shedding your old skin, exploring new territory is the only thing that can like make you feel the same high or a better high than you had when you were on this particular substance, right? And so exploring new territories and just walking into the unknown and kind of exploring that I think you guys are going to find such satisfaction in that later in life. And specifically for a lot of you, the reason I want to say you can start as early as now is because I believe it has a purifying effect on your soul to explore new environments and to explore what's, how do I put this? It's just like, I'm sensing like a, a sense of like curiosity and childlike wonder and like feeling scared, but good all at the same time. It's kind of like this exploring vibe is what I'm seeing. And with Nine of Diamonds, I'm seeing you deeply value this. This is something that you're learning throughout your life. And especially later in life, you're going to learn to really value exploring your environment down to the fullest. So you guys might travel a lot. But besides just like traveling, like traveling can just entail like going to another country, staying in a hotel and like eating at a restaurant, right? <laughs> like this exploring vibe is like where you go out onto a path where you don't know what's next. You know, like um, it could start with like trails and stuff. And then you guys might just go off into the woods randomly, <laughs> like, you know, like where there's no trail or no experience or no one's gone there before. You know, I feel like you guys might find so much enjoyment in this later in life. Um, and I keep wanting to say later in life, but I also want to make it clear that you guys can do this exploring thing throughout your life whenever you need to. Um, it's going to really help purify you with the strength card. She's wearing a white dress indicating purity. She's like cycled through her wilder instincts and she's able to tame this lion, right? So I feel like you guys are going to have this ability to tame your natural surroundings or just be, it's like you're, 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 you're figuring out what's the wild side to you and also the human side to you through this exploring path, basically. Wow. Um, you guys are definitely my like adrenaline junkies. I can see that really clearly. Um, yeah, you have a very cool life. I I like I feel like if I had your life though, I'd have a heart attack cuz I don't like adrenaline this much. <laughs> but I feel like you guys are like very much like adrenaline junkies. So I uh thank you for watching my reading. Um if you like the reading, oh wait, actually I have one more card. Sorry. One more card to pull for you guys. I'm going to pull a financial um karma card to see what your karma is in finances for this lifetime. I did it for the rest of the group, so I'll do it for you. If you feel like ending the reading now, you guys can skip out if you want, but you might want to stay for this. Let's see what card wants to come out for their financial thing in this life. We have perfection. Give up your perfectionism. It's causing delays in your finances. You'll never get ahead if you don't overcome the fear of failure. You are enough and have what it takes to improve your finances. I feel like you guys want to be really wealthy or you want, hmm, I feel like you guys are perfectionists. I feel like you also have this ability to kind of want to get things right the first time instead of like trial and error. And it's interesting because I do see that you have kind of more of a curvy life path. So it's not just going to be like, you know, hit it and quit it or not hit it and quit it. What am I trying to say? Um, it's not going to be like, you're going to have this like do it and then set it in stone and then it's going to just happen for the rest of your life, right? There's kind of like some curves and some twists and turns and some exploration. Think about this. It's like exploration. Like think of your life as like a way to explore things, right? Um, perfection means like you're trying to control the outcome of every situation. Um, I feel like maybe you guys struggle with your finances from time to time that you might 
some of your financial karma could be that you're you're meant to kind of just let it flow and not worry too much about how much money you're making, but maybe more worry so much about, or not worry, but like enjoy the experiences you're having, right? Um, specifically with the entertainment thing with the Three of Pentacles here, because this is the only Pentacle card I see um, in the tarot section, I see that you guys could be making some money in the entertainment thing. So maybe when that comes up, you'll be making more money. Um, also, with the nine of diamonds, I am seeing that like, it's interesting. I don't think you guys are meant to have, like, I don't think you're meant to end this lifetime with like a ton of money, right? Like, I don't think you're meant to accumulate a lot of wealth and end it with a lot of wealth. Or at least if you don't, your partner might have the money or something like that. Because I am seeing with this Explorer card, you guys might spend a lot of your life savings or what you end this life with. You might decide to spend it all in exploration or in travel. So that's something that I'm seeing. And remember, perfection is like, you don't have to be perfect. Like, you know, um, life doesn't have to be this like cookie cutter, perfect thing happening every step of the way. You know, there's lots of mistakes that can happen. And the mistakes are kind of what makes things beautiful, you know. Um, and I feel like you guys can explore any of these things in any different way. There's no like, set things set in stone. Um, I'm not really getting too much inf information with this perfection card, to be honest. Um, you will never get ahead if you don't overcome the fear of failure. I kind of want to just read these messages to you guys, because I think the messages specifically um, are important. And it says progress, not perfection on this book, right? It says, um, give up your perfectionism. It's causing delays in your finances. You will never get ahead if you don't overcome the fear of failure. You are enough and have what it takes to improve your finances. So keep that in mind. Keep those messages in mind. Now I'm going to end the reading. If you guys enjoyed this reading, please like or comment below. If you really enjoyed this reading and you resonated with my energy, feel free to subscribe to the channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. And with that said, we're going to move on to group four with the Heliodor. Thank you guys again so much for watching. It was a pleasure reading for you. Hey, group four, this is if you pick the, it always rhymes. Why, right, why does it always rhyme? Group four, if you pick the Heliodor, <laughs> this is going to be your reading. Um, so I'm a little giddy because I just ate some cereal. And I'm like five years old, guys. Sometimes I just like, I buy those little single serving boxes of like all the varieties of cereal so I can have as many different kinds as possible. <laughs> and, and <laughs> yeah, um, so I just ate Apple Jacks. I don't know if you guys know the cereal Apple Jacks, but I just had some Apple Jacks. Okay, so let's get into the reading. I'm feeling giddy. And maybe this is like a sign for this pile because I've been working with Heliodor lately too. Just a little heads up for you guys. Um, as far as like an energy kind of conduit for myself. So I've been working with it energetically. But let's see what is coming up for you guys as far as like your life purpose. So... This card wants to come out. We have Motivator. What else wants to come out? We have Designer. Wow. What else? We have Transporter. And get one more we have oh what is this peacemaker cool let's get some tarot cards for you guys I don't know if you guys are tarot readers yourselves, but, um, or you shuffle or have your own tarot deck, but sometimes when you're shuffling, the deck will like collide on itself and not shuffle fully. And <laughs> I always used to feel so ashamed. I'm like, oh no, you know, but now 
I'm like okay with it. I'm sorry guys, I'm giddy for this pile. I don't know why. Blame it on the Apple Jacks. Okay, let's get some tarot cards for you guys. This card wants to come out for a transporter. We have the three of wands. And then we also have the Knight of Pentacles for Peacemaker. And we have our last two cards. We have Wheel of Fortune with Designer and we have Knight of Wands with Motivator. Let's see, I'm gonna get some playing cards for you guys. We have Eight of Spades for Motivator. I see you guys. Okay, what else do we have? Let's draw the rest of them. I feel like drawing them all back to back. So we'll have Designer, the Nine of Spades, Transporter with the Ace of Hearts, and Peacemaker with the Seven of Spades. Okay, let's get into your guys' reading. Man, we have such interesting people in today's readings. I'm so happy you guys are all on my channel. Okay, so um, let's get into it. What do I start with? Okay, um, let's start with motivator. So this is kind of like coming out as like a little bit of a personality thing about you guys. Um, but it's also coming out as like something you could do for a career as well, or something that you could do in more of a tangible way for your life purpose. So eight of spades in the playing card system is all about willpower. It's all about like focusing and concentrating your will on one thing and just overcoming it with sheer guts, basically in sheer willpower. First of all, I feel like you guys are very interesting people. You're very, um, how do I put this? like spiritual and at the same time physical. Um, I'm just going to get into the reading and I'll just keep reading and I think all the messages will come through. So with Motivator, Eight of Spades and Nine of Wands, I see that it says, right here it says, there is a skill you possess that needs to be shared with the world. Consider a career in coaching, speaking, lobbying, activism, or mentoring. You may be in need of motivation yourself or needing inspiration. So what I'm seeing here is that you guys take on clients specifically that you want to motivate or help out of tricky situations. Um, I see that these clients could be just anyone. Like you guys love motivating people. You love being getting in people's faces, motivating them into action, getting them to move, getting them to do things. You love being that person that stimulates someone into activity. I feel like you really help people with their willpower. You could be somewhat of a personal trainer or you could be someone who helps people overcome obstacles with like guts and determination. With the Knight of Wands here, I see that you help people overcome obstacles just like this knight is kind of leaping over something. This horse is leaping over something. I see you help people overcome obstacles. You help people discover their passion for things, their passion in life. And I also see that you also help people. And also here's the thing. A lot of these people you help, you might also be like have romantic flings with is something that I'm seeing as well. Because the Knight of Wands does talk about like a sexual fling or some kind of physical component to their fling. So I feel like maybe a few of these people, this is why it's coming off as more of like a casual thing or a hobby. It might not be something you have as a career because I feel like in a career position, you might not be able to have like romantic connections with these people. But for example, for a lot of people in your life, this is just something you're meant to do for a lot of people throughout your life. You're meant to motivate them. You're meant to get people moving. You're meant to kind of stimulate people. You're meant to arouse people. You're meant to kind of like get them fired up about life. Um, yeah, especially with this eight of spades here, you're meant to get people to focus. You have this ability to get other people to focus on a goal or objective. Um, I'm seeing two situations here and I'm not quite sure which one is coming out as dominance as far as like what my intuition is telling me but I am saying that like something about working with people who have ADD or ADHD could either be 
amazing and like life changing for them, or it could be very infuriating for you. <laughs> like I am seeing that like, it depends on the type of person basically. Like if you might be working with someone who has ADHD or ADD, and because you have this ability to motivate them and get them into a singular focused action, it helps them focus basically. I will just say your guys' personality to other people is kind of like Adderall. It's kind of like a focusing drug is kind of what I'm seeing. And it kind of gets people stronger and makes them have more willpower and focus and determination. People get less distracted around you is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. For example, if you speak or you become a public speaker, you have a way of speaking that captivates an audience to the point where they're only focused on you. Like they don't turn around, they don't turn away, they don't look at anything else. They're kind of just focused on you. They narrow in on you because you provide that spark of singularity is kind of the vibe that I'm getting. And a lot of these people you could actually have romantic flings with. You could help people that you have romantic flings with. So it's not just a romantic fling for you. It's like uh, people kind of become these projects for you basically. So even if someone is like someone you're romantically interested in or you're physically attracted to, you also make sure to help them out on that willpower, that willpower side of life, right? Um, so you help them, you help them get them focused and determined on specific things in their life that they need to be focused and determined on. Um, the careers that I feel like with this group, I feel like reading all the careers specifically because um, it could benefit you more than my interpretation of the reading. I feel like the cards could help a lot in this particular reading rather than just my interpretation. So I'm going to read those as well. It says, consider a career in coaching, speaking, lobbying, activism, or mentoring. So these are all things that you probably could be really, really good at. Now let's get into the other cards. I see with designer here, I kind of want to save designer for the end. Um, let me go into Peacemaker. Okay, so with Peacemaker here, it says you are being called to apply diplomacy and tact to a difficult situation. Now, this is interesting because I'm seeing that you guys might be good at keeping the peace, but more so than that, there's a stronger message coming in here that it's saying that like peace is going to follow you wherever you go. So for example, if you feel like you struggle with keeping the peace in your environment, or maybe you're so stimulating to others that people don't feel peaceful in your presence. This seven of spades card is the card of faith. It's the card of believing in something bigger than yourself. And so here's the thing that it's like the peacemaker thing is more so rather than like something that you're going to be doing, it's something you're going to be believing in. You're going to be believing in the fact that you have that you create a peaceful environment, right? Instead of trying to make the peaceful environment, which I see could possibly backfire. Um, you're believing that you're creating a peaceful environment. Um, and there's a difference there. Um, trying to make a peaceful environment is like using your wi like willpower, like you would be doing over here when you're helping people with their willpower um, to make a peaceful environment. That would be like, you know, confronting someone about something and making sure they're feeling okay and being like, are you feeling okay? You know, that would be like confronting them about it. The seven of spades talks about faith. It talks about non-attachment. It talks about the fact that letting people, how do I put this? experience their own lives without your interference in that regard is going to create peace in their lives. You don't have to try. You don't have to try to create peace. You just have to believe that peace will happen. And that's the, that's the, that's the ticket here. It's more of a mindset, right? You have to kind of believe that people will find peace on their own, right? That no matter what you do, peace will surround you. That's kind of the vibe that I'm seeing. And so this is more of like a mindset that gets taken on throughout your life is kind of what I'm seeing. With the Nine of Pentacles here, it's just saying that like, focus on the work, focus on the vision, focus on the plan that you have ahead of you, the goal that you have ahead of you, peace will follow. You don't have to worry about peace or like, you know, not stepping on toes or making sure everyone's okay. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about the peace. Follow the vision. Follow the, the you know, what you've set before yourself to do. Because I'm seeing that that is the most important thing. Peace will follow. People will understand. Peace will follow. With the seven of spades here, you don't have to worry about playing diplomacy or worrying about other people's feelings. You know, it's just the thing is the trick here, though, is if you do find that your environment's not peaceful. And I feel like you guys are people that need a peaceful environment, right? It's a mindset. You have to believe the environment will be peaceful. You have to kind of go within and kind of think like, okay, so I need to believe 
that this environment's going to be peaceful. Or you have to kind of say to yourself, like, the environment's going to be peaceful. It's, it's, a, it's, it's kind of more of a mindset. And I see that it's interesting because I see that you guys learn this mindset at some point in your life. And just through just having this mindset alone, it makes your environment more peaceful. A lot of you have already learned this. I'm picking that up right now. A lot of you have already learned that just believing in a peaceful environment is what creates a peaceful environment. So um, for most of you, this is just a confirmation message. For others of you, some younger viewers on my channel, this is something that's coming later in life. So uh, be prepared for that. Uh, you don't have to try so hard to make a peaceful environment. You just have to believe in a peaceful environment. I hope I'm making myself clear there. Um, Transporter is the most confusing card. I want to get into that next. Um, oh yeah, I'll, I'm going to read the... I'm going to read the... Um, the careers to consider politics, negotiations, unions, contracts, or any peacemaking careers. Um, it's interesting because I feel like you guys could do well in those careers, even though it wouldn't use conscious peacekeeping because you're believing in peacekeeping. Um, it could be one of those things where because you have that peaceful mindset, it could create peace in your atmosphere. You don't have to like try to make peace, but like because you have your mindset, you could you could do very well in these careers that I just read because it's going to um, affect them through your like aura, essentially. With Transporter here, we have this card is a good indicator that things will start moving for you rather quickly. A career in transportation, here's the careers. A career in transportation such as travel, driving, or shipping could appeal to you. You could travel for work or perhaps you need to take action on some financial matter. The main thing that I'm seeing here with Transporter is you might actually travel a lot for your career. And with Ace, it, it, being an Ace here, I see you traveling a lot by yourself. Um, this is where you're going to get the most introspection in your life. I feel like through traveling to different localities, um, this is where you guys are going to have the ability to see into your own self clearly and to provide that self-love for yourself. So for example, you might be traveling on a plane to meet a client across the country or something like that. And maybe on that trip of traveling through being in that plane, you read like a really good book and it like stimulates you to love yourself more or you watch like a movie and it reminds you of something in your past and you really learn that like you want this specific love for yourself. So Ace of Hearts talks about that self-love, that self-care and self-love for ourselves. Um, and also the fact of we're moving on things on our own. It's a relationship with ourself, our own individual self, our own unique identity. So I do see that like traveling gets you more in touch with that is kind of what I'm seeing. With three of wands here, I am seeing that like there's also a period where there's a period where this guy is kind of like waiting and he's watching the ships go in and out of the harbor, right? Um, it's interesting. I'm seeing too that like maybe part of the time where you're really enjoying your time alone or your time to yourself is when you're waiting for things to happen. It's almost like you guys have this ability, like when there's a timeout in life or nothing's really going on, you have this ability to just kind of sit, chill, and like just get into your own self, right? And just kind of really dwell into that, your own individual self and kind of like explore that, right? And so also waiting for planes or like if you're in like, if you're say you're traveling across the country and you're like waiting for your flight to come, maybe you get to the airport early just because you want that extra time to yourself to like think. Maybe that environment with all the people traveling in and out from different localities, maybe that's really easy for you to think and get into your own head in that moment. So yeah, I'm doing, I'm seeing something with Transporter. Also with Transporter, you could be um, like shipping goods and services back and forth across the country. And so maybe a lot of your life or periods of your life is like waiting for some kind of good or shipment to come in from another country or something like that. Um, also with Transporter on a more like low scale vibe, I am seeing like just driving around in your car might be beneficial or maybe you like to take drives and you just really get in tune with yourself and your own mind and your own inner thoughts in that period of time, right? Or maybe being near a freeway or a place where people are traveling. Like for example, maybe there's a spot that overlooks a freeway or something like that and you just like to sit there and let, you know, as the cars go by, you kind of start to think and get into your head. Something with travel and standing by or being in the travel, it's like, that's where you get in touch with your own self, basically. Um, with designer, um, it's interesting, and Wheel of Fortune and the Nine of Spades. 
With Nine of Spades, I'm seeing kind of like, Nine of Spades is kind of like a card with a lot of like psychic components to it. Um, with Wheel of Fortune, this is about turning a turn of your luck, essentially, or a change of the, the like I'm seeing all these angels and they're reading this book. It's like reading a book about your life and then the page changes and it's the next chapter and you're like, whoa, okay, I'm here now, you know? Um, the Wheel of Fortune talks about those ups and downs in life. So I do see with designer here, you guys might actually have a knack for designing things. Specifically, I'm seeing the image on this card with the woman. It's like you might be in like high fashion or you might design furniture. Whatever this is, you have a knack for designing. Um, with the Nine of Spades here, I do see that there is a component of psychic ability that is affects your design. So for example, you might get downloads of designs from higher beings that kind of are like time to design this, right? Or time to do this. And so I feel like the more you start designing projects, like for example, say you, you carve out or say you make a couch, right? Like a beautiful couch for someone's home. And that's like the first project you make and you get really excited about it. Maybe you went to school for designing or something like that. And this is your first project you made. Um, maybe after that first project you get, when you're finished with it, you get like this information like, okay, I need, you need to make a desk now or like something like make a desk. And so you're getting like a download to make some kind of something that's like goes with that last product or something that builds off that last product. So you might find that when you start designing things, it snowballs, right? Like it starts to snowball and one thing happens after the other, basically. It's kind of what the Wheel of Fortune kind of reminds me is a wheel like spinning. And as it like builds downhill, it gets more and more momentum. And so I see this designer career taking off and becoming a big part of your life at some point. Something with designing or creating or something like that could take off. For you guys. Also with the nine here, nines can talk about counseling and giving back to others a little bit. I do see that you guys might have an ability to like help people with their fashion choices. You might actually be have an eye for beauty and kind of like pick out like what looks good on someone else or what looks like um, stylish on someone else. You could help other people dress better or something like that. You could be like a what are those like personal shoppers? You could be like a personal shopper for someone. Um, with Wheel of Fortune, I see that your life is going to get crazy exciting with this designer energy, right? It's like this is when your life gets wild, exciting. Anything can happen. Um, you learn to expect the unexpected when you start getting into this career because it's almost like it's divinely guided. Um but it's interesting. It's like very unexpected. It's like you're just there to enjoy the ride. You're just there to read the book of your life at that point and just be the actor and player in it. Um, with the nine of spades here, I am saying that this designer career could happen towards the end of your life or it could be something where you feel like it's a bigger life purpose for you or something like that. Um, it's crazy because I feel like you guys also have this ability to motivate others and if they're both equally strong, this designer and this motivation energy to, to motivate others and to have this ability to like deal with fashion and stuff like that. It's interesting because the eight of spades, the motivator card is coming off more physical. You might be motivate people through, how do I put this? Um, like even your sex with people, like if you get sexually intimate with someone, it could motivate them into action. I wouldn't be surprised if you hook up with someone and then after you guys hook up, like the next day they're like starting a workout routine or the next day they're starting like a, they're, you know, they're like, maybe they decided to start reading that novel they wanted to read, or maybe they decided to like go out and start applying for jobs. Like there's something stimulating about your energy to where when you like hook up with people or when you like get engaged with them on a physical level, it kind of motivates them into action. Um, I see that there is, there could be a component to this with your designs too. Like for example, if you're designing something you guys could design that could be beneficial is like workout equipment or workout clothing or something like that. Um, or otherwise there's something about designing things that like stimulate people. So for example, if you make a couch, maybe that's the couch that like people buy that's like a love couch, right? And then a lot of people like hook up on that couch or something. Unbeknownst to you, it's like then you find out that like, 
you know, someone who's bought your couch, like, oh man, me and my husband love that couch, you know, <laughs> like it's one of those things. Um, and with transporter, there is like the element of transporting things back and forth and traveling. I feel like whenever you're traveling, that's where you really connect with yourself. And that's part of your life purpose too, is to connect in with yourself and to explore like movement for its own sake. Yeah. And with the peacemaker card, do not worry about like this is kind of, it's almost coming through as like a time waster is kind of what I'm seeing it as. It's almost like if you try to focus on like helping others or if you, not like helping others, it's the wrong thing. It's like if you try to make the peace in situations, right, that's kind of just going to backfire on you is kind of what I'm seeing. It's like you guys might have noticed in your life, like whenever you try to like, um, be diplomatic or try to like smooth over the rough edges, like things just blow up in your face. And so I'm seeing with seven of spades, it's more about having faith that the peace will be kept rather than making sure the peace is kept yourself. The, the nine of pentacles is just saying, focus on your work, focus on what you do best, focus on your vision, focus on your goals, focus on the path forward. It's not your job to make everyone happy or, um, in a, you know, it's not your job to create the peaceful environment, right? If you came to this reading and you really enjoy like diplomacy and helping people and stuff like that, um, and you like that active role of it where you like go to one person and talk to them and you go to the next person and talk to them and you know, what's that called? Like shuttle diplomacy. This is not really going to be your pile. Um, because this pile here is more about, um, like just having faith that the peaceful environment is going to surround you. And just because you have faith about it, it will happen. It's like, this is where you manifestation comes into play. Like I wouldn't go up to someone and confront them about their bad mood. I would just secretly manifest behind their back a good mood in their life. You know, that's kind of where the power is going to come from here. I'm going to pull you guys one more card. Um, I'm going to pull a card for your finance your kind of like your financial karma in this lifetime or what you're meant to explore in this lifetime with the rest of the career cards and we'll see what um comes up for you guys let's see what wants to come out okay this card kind of is jumping out to me manifesting it's funny how the cards do that sometimes um, you'll be like talking about one thing and then the cards pop up right next. They're like, yep, you're on the right track. So like manifesting is the key here, right? Like this peacemaker card is really important because manifesting is going to be something you're meant to learn in this life. It's like your money karma. So for example, if you don't have enough funds in this lifetime or you don't have enough um, resources in this lifetime or you don't have a path forward, manifesting is really important for you guys. Yeah, I see that it's funny because this guy's like wearing like a, what is it, like a Harry Potter scarf and like Harry Potter glasses, you know, um, in this card. Um, so maybe that's something that like is important to you. Like maybe like you guys enjoy Harry Potter. You like watching those movies or something um, or reading the books. I know they're books too. Um, so with manifesting, I'm just seeing that like manifesting your environment could be just as powerful and specifically more powerful than trying to control what's in your environment. Specifically seeing with this designer card, you're getting downloads for like your designs, you're getting downloads for things to make and create in your life. Um, and, you know, even if you're a motivator and say you, you decide to stick with this motivation career, maybe you're making fitness plans for something. I'm seeing that you're getting downloads about what's the best way to get people motivated into things and stuff like that. But yeah, mainly manifesting is going to be really important for you guys. Uh, I feel like maybe you can do a lot of it when you're traveling. Like you might actually be traveling different localities or when you're by yourself, maybe put in your headphones and think to yourself and manifest or meditate at the airport or something like that um, could be beneficial for manifesting. I don't know why I'm feeling airport vibes for you guys. I know like I've split into two groups because one group I'm seeing specifically car travel, like traveling in your car and your vehicle and like manifesting while you're driving, like listening to music and manifesting things in your life while you're driving. And for others of you, I'm seeing like on an airplane or like while you're waiting for the airplane or something like that, or, um, just in general, like while you're by an area where there's lots of travel, like maybe you live by an airport and the planes flying by are like signals to you to like send thoughts off into the universe or something like that, or it just seems soothing to you or something like that. Um, but yeah, manifesting is really important for you guys. That's kind of your karma here to learn in this lifetime. So if you 
are like, if you've poo-pooed manifest, if this reading's been accurate so far and you've like poo-pooed manifesting throughout your life, like it might be time to, to reevaluate <laughs> and take another look at that. Um, anyway, so I'm going to end the reading there. If you guys like this reading, please like or comment below. If you really enjoy this reading, feel free to subscribe to my channel. Uh, we're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Tarot. Um, with that said, we're going to move on to group five with the spirit chords. Thank you guys again for letting me read for you. I was really an honor. So thank you again. Hey, group five, this is if you picked the um, spirit quartz. So you pick that lovely stone. This is going to be your reading. So last group, group five. Last but certainly not least. Let's see what is coming out for you guys for your life purpose. What kind of things are you meant to do in this lifetime? First card we have is real estate. Wow. I feel like shuffling a little bit more. Okay. Next card we have is retail. This card wants to come out too. We have the rebel. And this card wants to come out. We have writer. Wow. Okay. Let's get you guys some tarot cards. State, we have the Ten of Cups for retail. We have the world. Wow, for the rebel, we have the death card, and for the writer, we have the lovers. Then I'm going to draw some playing cards for you guys, and then we'll get into the reading. Okay, we have a few cards popping up all at once. We have the Knight of Clubs for the Rebel and the Death. We have Jack of Hearts for Retail in the World, and Ace of Diamonds for Real Estate in the Ten of Cups. And last for Rider, we have Four of Diamonds. Okay, let's get into your reading. So first, the one thing I want to point out to you guys is you are going to have a home. I know for some of you that's like, um, like for some of you that might be like obvious information, like of course I'm going to have a home. But for others of you, I feel like it's a big deal to like have your own home or have your own family or a place where you can settle down and like have a, a place where it's like all yours, I guess is what you can say. You're going to have your own place of residence is what I can tell you. With the Ace of Diamonds here, I'm seeing that you're going to secure this place all on your own. Um, it's going to be something that you decide you want in this lifetime. Um, at some point, you're going to want your own place is kind of the vibe that I'm seeing. And so with Ace of Diamonds here, I see that this is a desire that you are having yourself and I'm seeing that you want it for your family. You want it for future generations. You want it for your love interest. You want it for your spouse. And if you have pets or children, you want it for them as well. You want to build a, ha a family structure. And so you want your own home. Um, I see that this home or this concept of a home is important in your life. 
It could be something that is not important now, but eventually it becomes more important. I see when it does become important, you might even get into real a real estate career or like selling homes for others because the idea of a home is so important to you that you feel you need to manage other people's homes or deal with homes yourself. So there is something with real estate, making money through real estate or earning some revenue through real estate and also earning the thing because diamonds are what you value, right? And so earning like your own individual value from real estate. So I'm seeing that as like your own home, like purchasing your own home or selling homes for other people. With 10 of hearts, I see this is really important because you have a knack for knowing what home is best for what family, right? So if you do get into real estate, I'm not saying you have to, but you guys have a knack for knowing what specific location, what specific home is best for what family. I feel like if you meet someone or someone buying a home, if you can meet someone, if you can meet the whole family, you'll know like when you go and look for homes, which home's the best home for, fit for that family. You'll be surprised at how many people, if you do real estate, tell you like, wow, the first home you showed us was just amazing. Like, I don't know how you understood us that well to like know what home was the best one for us. You guys might have um, uh, stuff with like Cancer or Fourth House and Jupiter or something like that, or something along the lines of like maybe um, Cancer in um, the Eighth House or something like that. Something where your intuition is like really good with homes, basically. Also, this could lead you into interior design as well. Like you might also, instead of like being a real estate agent and like selling homes to families, you might go into families' homes and like interview the family members and like make a, a home environment with interior design that like really resonates with all the people and all the family in that, in that, um, in that home. And I am seeing with the Ace of Diamonds here, this is something you do individually. It's something you do on a solo level. You won't be working with a team if you do this. And for most of you, if you don't get into this career, it's just going to be something that you do for yourself. I see that your own home is going to be very important to you. How you design your own home is going to be very important to you. And you'll all, you'll be able to do it fully and completely on your own is kind of what I'm seeing. It's going to be up to you to design the home. It's like you get total creative freedom, right? That's what the ace is representing is like singleness and kind of like doing it on your own. Um, with the retail card, it says... If you have an idea in mind that is give, is giving you the green light that there is a need for it, consider careers in retail or e-commerce, whether that's goods or services, save time, energy, and add passive income by taking your business online. Um, one thing that I'm seeing with the world card here is you are going to have some kind of online business is kind of what I'm seeing. With retail here, this could be just any kind of sales. The reason I'm saying it's definitely going to be online is because... Um, with the world card, we see that this is this business is going to affect the entire world. This is going to be products that people are going to be buying in like Russia, India, you know, America, Australia, England, um, like anywhere. Like people are going to be buying these products everywhere. Um, you know, South America, you know, Africa, like there's just going to be people are going to be buying your products for all over the world. Basically, this is where that you're going to be like sending stuff to, to everywhere. Um, with the Jack of Hearts, this is a card about sacrifice in love or an initiation in love. And so I feel like this, this career or something, there's, it's not just a career that's with the retail card here. It's not just something that you're just selling products online to people and you like hate your life, right? It's something you really feel passionate about. I feel like every product you send off is something that you put a lot of love and care and attention into that product, right? Um, this doesn't necessarily have to be tangible products, right? This could be some kind of online business where you sell digital products to people. But whatever the case is, is you put and invest a lot of love into these projects. You have this ability to be very creative in this business and very like adventurous. But at the same time with the Jack of Hearts here, it's almost like you have this ability to truly love others through these products, right? Um, it might be something where you are dealing with your creativity as well. So for example, whatever this online business is, you might be dealing with your creative energies is kind of what's creating it. You know, or your people are enjoying your creative energies online. 
With the Rebel card, the Nine of Clubs, and the Death card, it's funny, this is coming through as not something you're meant to have a life purpose in this lifetime, but with the Nine here, this is meant to be something you leave behind in this lifetime. So you may have been born with a strong rebellious streak, right? We see this newspaper on fire, and you may actually have in your childhood or when you were younger, destroyed specific things. So for example, you might have been that kid that really like played too hard with their toys and like broke them all, you know? Or like you might be that kid that was like really rebellious against their parents and kind of like said like, you know, no, I don't want to do that, you know, like, or something like that. And so you're learning in this lifetime with the death card and the nine of clubs here. This is a major life, major soul chapter you're closing. Your soul is going through a, a evolution in this lifetime, right? You might be dealing in this lifetime with other rebellious people that are reflecting to you the nature of your previous rebelliousness and past lives. So what do I mean by that? You might um, run into people in your lifetime that are really rebellious, antagonistic, or don't want to follow the status quo or really want to throw, you know, caution to the winds and just do whatever they want. You know, they want to go against the grain, go against the rules. And so what I'm seeing here, part of your life purpose is to either encounter these people or have this experience yourself and kind of learn that it's not worth having or learn that these people are not worth having in your life. I see that stability is kind of important, especially with this four of diamonds over here we get into over here. Um, it's like you're meant to kind of let these past relationships or past life connections of really rebellious people, really people who just break all the rules no matter what they say or do, right? Or if you're like this, right, this is saying that you're going to eventually give away, take this attitude and you're going to put it aside and you're going to go for a more conservative kind of existence is kind of what I'm seeing. It's interesting because we also have you're a trailblazer meant to see things differently and set a new path for others. This is true. It's like you're meant to channel that rebellious energy into like creating new things for others, right? The Nine of Clubs also talks about um, counseling and giving like wisdom and sharing knowledge with like with people basically. Um, and so I am seeing that like this kind of becomes like an area where you like share this knowledge or you give it to other people basically. With the death card here, you are meant to close this chapter out in your life. Um, I am seeing a little bit that like with this rebellious nature, you're meant to kind of like put it aside in favor of like putting and investing love into situations. That's kind of like the path forward is to kind of like invest love and kind of leave the rebellious part out of the equation. Um, now, it's, it's interesting because you might have some karmic things to deal with in this lifetime. Part of your life purpose is to deal with this karma with rebellion. So like I said, you're going to might encounter some rebellious people that teach you a lot about who you were in a past life. And it shows you and reflects to you what you need to close out in your own personality in this lifetime. So um, you might realize through seeing another person an attribute or a character trait that you don't want to have in this lifetime. So what you do is you think like, how am I like that myself? And you think like, I want to close that out or I want to put that aside or I'm going to make that come to a conclusion. So a lot of karmic relationships with rebellious people basically is kind of what I'm seeing for you guys. Um, with writer stories matter, it says your words have power to influence others, find out how you can contribute a career in social media management, book writing, content writing, or blogging could be for you. Use words and visualize it as you write them to manifest more money into your life. One thing that I'm seeing with the retail card and writer kind of combined, you guys might actually, instead of sending off tangible products to someone, remember, I mentioned that they could be digital products too. With the world card here, I see that whatever stories you create or whatever stories you're writing get that get sent off to the world, people can see those and they like benefit from them and they feel the love from them. They feel kind of the love and care that you put into those stories and they feel those throughout the world. And so you can make a good living off of that is what I'm seeing. With the Four of Diamonds and the Lover's card, I am seeing that you might actually manifest a love interest through writing a story about them. So you might write about someone in that you want in, to come into your life and they might manifest as a lover. I see that this lover is going to provide a solid amount of finances for you. Nothing crazy. I see that it's almost like um, just a very secure financial situation that this love interest is going to have and that you're also going to have with this love interest. It's like your love together creates kind of like this vibe of security in both of your lives, right? Um, 
It might be interesting because I feel like with this love interest, you guys might tell stories to each other or there might be storytelling might be really important with this love interest or like sharing stories about your life and them sharing stories about their lives. Sharing stories is just really important with this person. I see this as a love where you can fully reveal yourself to this person and they can fully reveal themselves to you. Um, there's no really hidden secrets between both of you. You can really be open and honest and upfront with the other person. Um, and so when you guys share stories with each other, they know they come from a place of like authenticity, essentially. One thing I want to point out that my eye just got drawn to is use words and visualize it as you write them to manifest more money into your life. I think that you guys are talented writers and I feel like you guys are talented storytellers. So for example, with the four of diamonds here, I feel like you could manifest a lot of money and part of your life purpose is to find out that writing things or creating stories or the written word is so powerful in manifesting money and love into your life that that's kind of the main, mo the main method that you're gonna use to manifest those things is what I'm seeing. Let's pull one last card for you guys. Um, we're gonna have a... Um, Finance card. Oh, this one already wanted to come out. This is representative of the karma that you're dealing with in this lifetime. And we have legal. Legal's interesting because you're learning how to play by the rules is kind of what I'm seeing. With this rebellious card here, you might deal with a lot of people who are rebelling against the system. And with legal, you're learning to play by the rules. You're learning to play by the system that is in place in this lifetime. So whatever this system is, you're gonna integrate well into it and you might receive rewards and benefits from this system. So it's one of those things where I feel like it's also a part of your karma. So you might actually with this rebel card be a little terrified of the legal system and how laws and um, rules are put in place in this lifetime. And the only reason you're afraid of that is because in a past life you were so rebellious that you rebelled against these systems because um, you found them to be unfair or not right. But in this lifetime, the system is something that you're going to be moving towards as far as like something that, um, how do I put this? Something you're going to be benefiting from in this lifetime, right? It's something you can put your trust in, essentially, as long as you follow this, the rules of this system or kind of do everything by the book is kind of how I'm seeing this play out. Um, the things that might happen where it says you might have to take care of some legal matters related to financial issues, um, you could receive money from some kind of legal matter. I'm definitely seeing that something along the lines of some kind of money coming in through some kind of legal proceeding or something like that, or some kind of government thing, money coming in. You might receive money from the government or just from some kind of legal battle with someone else, basically. There might be a situation where you might have a legal battle with another rebellious person and you actually come out on top and you get... Um, what you deserve, what's just for you in that situation, basically. Um, this is a good time to handle any legal matters involving money. Yeah, I feel like in your life, you just legal is going to be something that is um, important in your life. Um, also, it's because it's coming out next to the lovers, you might actually marry like a lawyer or someone who's involved in legal or who does legal work or works with the law or something like that. That could be something that is something that could be coming in for you guys as well. Let me see if I missed anything. One thing that I'm noticing here where it says build a solid foundation prior to building several stories above it. I think one of your things you're learning in this lifetime is to take things one step at a time. Instead of trying to just go all out and do it all at once, I feel like taking things one step at a time and building slowly and surely is going to be beneficial for you guys. Um, mainly for your playing cards, we have the solo card where you're going to be doing a lot of things alone. The Jack of Hearts, which talks about an initiation into love or being creative with your love energy and sending off that love energy. Nine of Clubs means you're you're leaving something behind and specifically leaving this mindset of rebelliousness behind. And Four of Diamonds means structure or financial stability. You're meant to have financial stability in this lifetime. And mainly if you're not, if you don't have that in this lifetime, writing stories is going to really unlock it. Writing new characters and life stories that talk about you receiving finances or characters receiving money or talking about a love interest that you want. Writing a story about someone that you love or that you want to come into your life is going to help bring them in. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys. If you enjoyed this reading, please like or comment below. If you really enjoyed this reading, please subscribe to the channel. We're always welcoming new subscribers here at Cody Ch Tarot Chero. Cody Tarot, Cody Chariot, I should call my channel that.
um, Cody Taro. And with that said, that was the last reading for today. I really enjoyed reading for you guys. Thank you again so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next Pick a Card. Bye.